Are you struggling with roadblocks as a woman in the challenging and constantly changing world of corporate America? If you feel stuck in your career, you may be holding yourself back and may not even realize it. Prepare to be enlightened by the meaningful discussions here at the No Woman Left Behind podcast. Each week, gather the insight you need to break down those walls of limiting beliefs. Unleash your full potential and unlock the leader within. Listen to raw conversations with corporate women as they share inspiring stories with the purpose of obtaining their dream career and living a truly fulfilling life. Here's your host, Rosie Zielinskas. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about knowing, owning, and showing your value. Regina Huber is a transformational leadership coach, and she's going to go through her powerful leadership transformation framework. So there's four critical areas to her framework that will walk you through the components of what you need to incorporate to move the needle in your career. Regina is the CEO of Transform Your Performance. She drives bold, driven value heart-centered leadership of self and others, and she helps her coaching clients reach the next level of her career. Regina created three signature coaching frameworks, the Powerful Leadership Transformation, the New Paradigm Leadership, and the Get Your Dream Salary. So stay tuned for my conversation with Regina Huber. So Regina, I know that you talk about uh, stop blending in, start standing out and showing your unique brilliance your, and owning your value. And obviously this conversation is geared towards the, the woman in the corporate world that feels kind of stuck in their position. So what do you mean about by stop blending in and start standing out? Yes. Hi, Rosie. It's a pleasure to be here. It's, uh, you know, this is a really uh, huge opportunity for me to, to have this conversation with you and to inspire our audiences together. So I'm delighted about it and I'm grateful for it. Good. This stuff, uh, blending in, start standing out is all about what I call in my work, your distinctive uniqueness. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, uh, we often are told as women, we have to own our value. But what I have seen with my clients and in the past also with myself that is that we don't always even know exactly what that is. And so I like to talk about knowing, owning and showing your value so that then you can stand out and be extraordinary and no longer blend in. And you can distinguish yourself as the ideal candidate for the role you want, the project you want to be on, or, you know, if it's maybe a, a different organization. So how can you stand out as the ideal candidate for that new job? Right. So this is all about your unique brilliance. We all have it. Everybody has unique, specific greatness and genius. And uh, it's also, though, about addressing sometimes the other side of the coin, which is, you know, what are our shortcomings? How do we address them? Uh, do we always have to be perfect in everything? Probably not. I always encourage my clients to really focus and hone in on their strengths and build on those rather than focusing so much on what we're not so great at because we tend to do that as women anyway more. However, having said that, I think there are certain skills that we sometimes do need to improve that are, for example, um, required for leaders in any capacity, right? Leadership skills are important for all of us. Um, communication skills are important for all of us. Interpersonal skills, right? But as long as we have this self-leadership and this self-awareness and, and this really, uh, this great drive to, to practice value-driven leadership and to be a little bold in that, I think we can pull it off and we don't have to know everything. That's really an important message. Sometimes, you know, coaching can help, of course, depending what makes sense for everybody, right? And then, of course, uh, this distinctive uniqueness is a part of a bigger framework that I have built, my Powerful Leadership Transformation, or PLT. 
Got it. Okay. So I want to kind of go back to a few things that you said. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, this is a perfect conversation because you're absolutely right. Sometimes people, when we talk about knowing your value, people mm -hmm. are like, well, what does that mean? You know, so I like that you say knowing, owning, and showing your value. And that's, that's just you learning about yourself you knowing what you're good at, what you're not good at. And you actually said not to focus on what you're not good at because we naturally focus on what we're not good at, but also showing what we are good at. So that's knowing, I, you know, I've, I've uh, recently released a workbook that says know your worth. And we're not talking about obviously the person, people, you know, we, uh, there's no price to life, right? But you still have to know your professional compensation value. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff that goes in there. But once you understand, and we're, we'll talk about this with your, with your framework, but you have to be able to show how you contribute and how you will make a difference. So it is this this conversation is going to be very important because we want to talk about what does our value mean in the business world? What does that look like? So I do like the, the way you say knowing, owning, and showing that that is fantastic. And when I think one of the things that people, um, specifically women, is you're afraid to speak up. And mm -hmm. so you blend in. And yeah. This is really important because in order for people to notice you, you have to stand out. You have to speak up. And I know sometimes that's really hard for women. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's hard for women to to stand out or to advocate for themselves? Well, you know, I think... Um, what happens oftentimes is that we underestimate who we are and our value and our worth. And that's also probably why you wrote uh, this, this ebook, right? And uh, it's, it's really also about how is what we know and who we are relevant to our environment? How uh, can we, can we make an impact? And I'm oftentimes also really surprised how many women and maybe also men, but how many women because I mostly work with women as coaching mm -hmm. clients, that's why I know them better, don't have a written vision. They don't, you know, and so they they sometimes lose that focus a little bit and they focus far too much on what other people think about them. And because they tend to speak up a little bit less often, they think that one time they speak up, it has to be perfect. Now, when you practice it more often, then, you know, it doesn't matter so much if that one time uh, it doesn't sound as sophisticated, you know, as the other times, maybe. <laughs> so it's really also about practicing it. But why do they not want to do that? Well, also, partly it might also be, of course, because in the past, most of the companies, not all, but most of the companies were created by men for men, at, at least in, in big corporations. And that's changing for sure. But of course, then, you know, women always thought, and that might still be part of their corporate DNA in a way that they had to blend into that environment and now become somebody else, or at least not look too different or not sound too different, right? And I believe that when women can own their authentic voice and their authenticity and who they are and express that even also in how they dress, you know, I know there's dress codes, okay, but, you know, you want to also still be who you are and be authentic in how you show up in all senses. And I think that's when you become the most powerful and when it actually becomes easier to stand out and to speak up. Okay. So now you talked about, you know, owning your authenticity. Mm -hmm. Can you give maybe an example of how that actually applies with one of your clients as to how, you know, what transformation they had when they realized what their authenticity, um, what owning their, their authenticity means? Yes. One specific client comes to mind, comes to mind immediately. She works in financial services, which, you know, we know that it tends to be a little bit more formal in, um, in how people are dressed and how they are 
supposed to be dressed or expected to be dressed. And we often think of gray suits, but, you know, she just wasn't the type for that. And, and she wanted to wear her hair like she likes it, maybe in a ponytail and not all sophisticated in, in different ways. It's just not who she is. And actually, I think if she had done that, then that would have silenced her in a way because she would no longer have been she would have been playing a role basically mm -hmm. we brought out for her what mattered for her to be able to speak up in meetings and not be talked over by a colleague which was a serious problem that she had and it was a very specific person that constantly took her ideas and i know this sounds a little bit like a cliche but it is actually a real case <laughs> and and this person stopped talking over her when she applied some specific um, language uh, that that we practiced together that I also partly took from the conversational intelligence modality that I studied and uh, that gave her a lot of um, yeah it gave her a lot of self-confidence in that moment to have that language and I also helped her prepare energetically and because she is very holistically oriented in in her in her you know the, the the other part of her life she took that on and integrated it into her presence into her business presence and this was tremendously successful for her and she feels now so much better about how she shows up in, in presentations also because she has to do a lot of presentations mm. oh i love that i love that you were able to help her not only figure out what she wants to wear that still fits within you know that particular industry mm -hmm. but the language and the language is so critically important and so i think that's part of humanizing people in the workplace right through you know authentic and inclusive leadership and so i know you're a transformational leadership coach but how can a management team, a leadership team, humanize the workplace more so that people are comfortable bringing their authentic selves in? Well, there's certainly a lot of ways, right? Uh, the most important word for me is trust. <laughs> okay. Trust building, you know, trust is the glue that holds it all together, that holds your team together. Trust is also important for your own career as a leader to really build that trust in all directions. So you can then uh, have better connections you can network uh, more proficiently and and uh, just have a better time at work as well um mm -hmm. and also trust with yourself right do you trust yourself to actually do the work to, to step into the role that you want uh, as we step back to the to the uh, question about humanizing the workplace so trust building is really really important and there are, of course, several different tools we can use, like story sharing. I call it, by the way, story sharing and not storytelling <laughs> for mm -hmm. a reason, right? Um, or uh, just really encouraging our team members to share more about them uh, by asking the right questions, op more open-ended questions. And this cannot always happen in group settings. So we have to be really careful and sensitive about, okay, what questions do we ask in, in a one-on-one -on -one meeting? What questions can we ask in group settings? How does it all fit together, right? And I also believe that, so I, I created two frameworks and one I already mentioned, I certainly want to talk a little bit more about that because that's probably the most relevant for, for most of our audience. But I also created this other framework, the new paradigm leadership. And this is all about really um, putting the, the people in the center of the organization. I like to say the people are the heart of the organization. Yes. Without them, nothing works, nothing happens. So if you treat your people well, if you consider them with their very unique and specific aspirations, desires, their challenges, right? Then, uh, and you do that again in an authentic way mm -hmm. and consistently, then that's when you build trust. And as leaders, we can also share our own stories, our own transformation, 
we weren't always maybe successful in the past and our life hasn't always been an upward uh, line right and it's sometimes it's a roller coaster so yeah. when we share more about those transformational stories these are the inspirational stories that makes so much sense and i like that you say story sharing not storytelling because when you tell you're just implies that someone's just there but when you're sharing that's when you're making those relationships and, and those connections in a, in an authentic way and i think that's part of humanizing the workplace and i think we're we're much better today at humanizing the workplace because of the pandemic because the pandemic forced us to look at the whole person and not just the employee and so a lot of employers are now assisting their employees to go work out or you know take some time to go to the doctor or whatever during the work day meaning that there's flexibility and employers understand that it's the whole person and not just you know from nine to five you're only going to be an employee because that's not the case so so i really like that now let's talk a little bit about your powerful transformation um leadership framework like how what is that who is that for and what is it yeah so the powerful leadership transformation is really for anybody it's not just for people in a leadership role or position right okay. because first we need to lead ourselves and that is true for anybody who wants to be the pilot of their careers rather than the passenger Okay, because if we do not take the steering wheel, somebody else will do it for us. Yeah. And I really want everybody to be inspired to take their careers in their own hands because it's really your responsibility to steer it forward. And then other people should be helping you for sure. You know, mentors, coaches, whoever you choose to have by your side, your, your, your manager for sure. Um, but I also think it's important to to realize that no one can truly empower us but ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why the powerful leadership transformation or PLT framework has has four pillars. And again, you know, this is for yourself. This is a lot about self-leadership. But once you master these four pillars, people around that that you work with in your environment will see it and and you will automatically also transfer some of it to your team and to probably your peers and other people you interact with plus you can also actively actually take what you have learned um, in terms of transformation or tools in this framework you can also of course pass it on to your team and i always encourage people to do that now uh, the i just said you know no no one can empower you but yourself so the first pillar of of four of this framework is a self-empowering mindset and heart set mm. it's super important for all of us to remember that all you need to be successful is already inside of you yes it's in your mind and in your heart <laughs> so a lot of people talk about mindset of course but but it's not just about that right so yes we we need that self-empowering mindset very important for sure because you know we need to be ready sometimes to shed some of the limiting stuff limiting beliefs in a narratives that don't serve us maybe or your success or our success and maybe also deactivate old stories that make maybe keeping us smaller than we really are right so that's all about the mindset and because oftentimes our, cons our, our conditioning, if it's not, if it's not empowering conditioning, it can drag us down and it can keep us from showing up powerfully and confidently, right? And we see that a lot that we have all this subconscious stuff going on because most of our beliefs that are holding us down or, or keeping us smaller than we really are are subconscious. So it's, it's worth going really, really deep so that our subconscious doesn't put us on autopilot. Because even if you, even if you talk to a woman, she says, oh, I, I don't want to speak up in a meeting or I'm afraid to speak up in a meeting. I want to, but I'm afraid. <laughs> then, you know, she doesn't often, doesn't always know why that is, right? So all this self-doubt, 
the, the famous imposter syndrome and low self-value, fear of rejection and all of that. Sometimes we don't know where it even comes from. And I believe we don't always have to know, but but we still need to address it, right? right. So, so we can then address these sneaky, ir irrational fears, as I call them, or disempowering beliefs and thoughts and, 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 and thought patterns to to go away or to somehow at least deactivate them. Right. But I also believe that the mind is most powerful when it's led by the heart. Right. So that's why I put the two together, mindset and heart set, because they are better together. <laughs> I like that. I like that you have the mindset and the heart set. And I like that you say that everything that you need, you already have it inside you, mm -hmm. because I think that's so true. When I was younger, I would kind of, seek approval from others before I made a decision that I was wrestling with. And now I'm like, oh, no, I don't need to consult with other people because I know what to do, what feels right. So I love number one. Okay. So what's your yeah. second pillar? Yeah. I just want to go back to what you just said, if that's okay, Rosie, okay, sure, because, yes, you know, oftentimes we make, make the best decisions with our hearts. Oh yeah. So intuition like is so under valued and we we have been given it for a reason we have this gift to also use our intuition in addition to due diligence right absolutely so really use that power that specific wisdom that's in your heart in addition to the intellectual power of the mind and that's i think where the, where the magic is you I know i love that all right good yeah so yeah the second pillar is we talked about that already a little bit it's your distinctive uniqueness and, uh, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, what is it all about? It's it's about the two sides of the coin. So it's about your very unique genius, your brilliance uh, and owning it and showing it. And on the other hand, also addressing what we need to address in ourselves. Right. And also sometimes uh, just realizing that we don't have to learn everything ourselves. We can complement skills and talents uh, through other people in our teams right i also believe it's a lot about integrity and really being integrity with ourselves as well and and and, and really respecting how magnificent we are right and and all of that so that would be the second pillar of of the of the framework okay and, i like that so yeah, yeah. Let, let's go ahead and move on to three yeah, three is a body and energy conscious presence. You know, I learned a lot by doing, by experience through my life on um, several different continents and different uh, cultures and language zones and, and many, many different adventures. I have a very eclectic experience. I certainly studied a lot too, but you know, a lot of that I learned, for example, also through dance. For example, also through my holistic studies of holistic modalities, not everything uh, was always leadership related. And in fact, I was actually thrown into the cold water with my first leadership position. You know, I was just like somebody saw that potential in me and I didn't have relevant background and gladly they did. Right. A lot of times that doesn't happen for everybody. But so over time, I, of course, added knowledge on more more consciously and more intentionally but as i said a lot i learned also even through dance like leadership lessons that i learned through dance i wrote about this in blogs and in articles on linkedin on my linkedin newsletter and uh, you know so all of this uh flows into that third pillar a body and energy conscious presence we always hear that we need executive presence but what is that even right um, I published uh, not too long ago an article in the corporate magazine about this topic, really focusing in on energy, because again, just as we don't talk a lot about intuition in business, uh, we don't talk a lot about energy in business, but it's really super important. Yes. Okay. And you might have heard about, you know, Amy Cuddy, she's super famous, right? Yes. Um, and her power posing videos. This is about the body conscious aspect. Because even just getting fully present in your body and taking a few deep belly breaths and maybe doing a power pose, all of this has a physiological effect that then uh, reports back to how you feel, 
right? So it's it 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 really is everything in your body and in your emotions, in your feelings, in how you show up is connected. Right. Yes, for sure. Oh my gosh. Especially that that breathing, you know, that breathing, everybody's like, oh, breathing again, but breathing is like the fundamental thing that we need to do on a daily basis. Otherwise we're not alive. So yeah. when you, when you bring it, everything back to your breath, I think that's when you just ground yourself, you center yourself. And yeah, I love Amy Cuddy as well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I do like uh, on an almost daily basis, I do Wim Hof breathing in the morning, but you know, even if you find, don't find the time for that or whatever, you know, our excuses sometimes when you go into a challenging situation, it is worth taking a few, a few moments, at least, you know, we don't always know in advance whether we're going to go into that situation. So you can have a few really quick tools that, that you have at, uh, you know, that you can just think of right in the moment and do. And uh, for me, it's the energy tool and it's also the breathing. Right, yeah. depending on how much time I have, and there's certainly also NLP tools that you can use, and that I write about those also in my book, Speak Up, Stand Out, and Shine. But um, about the energy part now of the third pillar, so it's body and energy conscious presence. Right, we, or at least most of us, probably have heard that it takes seven seconds to make a first impression. Yes. However, it only takes. 0.07 seconds for our brains to figure out whether we can trust someone wait say that again 0 0.07 seconds it takes for our brains to figure out whether we can trust someone and that is part of our survival mechanism and that's oh. why it has to happen super fast right it's it's what our brain uses in a fight or flight um situation life or death and because a lot of what happens in our brain is subconscious we can't always cut that out we have our executive brain our free prefrontal cortex but mm -hmm. it's not always functioning a hundred percent right and of course this this uh this trust uh that that i'm talking about here it comes from our energy mm -hmm. because our energy speaks louder and faster than our words right we constantly communicate on an energetic level, whether we notice it or not. So why not be aware and, and really remember that? Sure. So energy has such a significant role in everything, in trust building as well. It's not just the words, it's everything. Our energy flows into our body language. You know, it flows into our business presence, our leadership presence, our executive presence. And I'm not so much talking about the quantity of energy here as i'm talking about the quality because now, Regina, let me interrupt you there for a second we yeah. just like people you know talk about their gut feeling right like their gut feel like i feel funny or i have this feeling is is that the same thing as energy or is that something different Okay, it all somehow is related to energy because energy is all we are, right? So our energy flows into everything we do, we think, we 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 say, right? So we really need to remember this. However, you know, the gut feeling and 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 neuroscience and in conversational intelligence, people say that the heart and the gut are part of the brain. So we have a head brain, we have a heart brain, we have a gut brain. I now studied now a little bit more recently, uh, more about human design, because I was really intrigued on, about how much insight I, I gained through my own human design chart. So I decided to study it more in depth and add it on as a, um, as a modality to my repertoire, into my coaching. Now, in human design, we have five types and some of the types depending on you know some some elements of the chart i'm not going to go into the, all the details now because we can see it so it's a little hard to to really um, imagine it but it depends on how you are designed to be or how you're designed to make your decisions and what role the gut has for you okay so i said earlier i made some of the best decisions in my life with my heart 
Mm-hmm. And that also has to do with my, I'm, I'm designed to make decisions in a certain way that also includes my emotions. And okay, we do relate the emotions to the heart, right? Yes. I do believe that the heart holds very specific wisdom that only we have about ourselves. And, uh, you know, the other more technical knowledge is somehow in our head brain. But um, so the gut also has its role. All our organs, if you study holistic modalities, you learn that all organs have specific consciousness. Wow. Yeah. So it all makes sense um, and and how it it flows together. It's so, so intriguing. That's incredible. So you said all our organs have a specific consciousness. Wow. (laughs) Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Just remember again, you know, the heart is often related with love, with self-love, with compassion, you know, all these uh, beautiful things. Our lungs are oftentimes when they, they're more affected by grief. When we get upset, we feel it in our stomach, a lot of us, yeah. right? Or in our shoulders, even also body parts. It's not just organs, right? But, right. you know. Well, you know, you see all those movies where, you know, someone asks somebody to marry them and they're like, it's the fir- it's the perfect person, but I don't love them or I don't feel, it doesn't feel right. And the, then they end up breaking up. But I think that's, that's the same thing when you're in the corporate world and something doesn't feel right. It's your gut, it's your energy, mm-hmm. it's all your consciousness that's coming, you know, to the surface and saying, hey, you need to pay more attention to or do something differently. Now, um, okay, so that was that was number three, right? Three, then we yeah. have one, one more. Number four is, yeah, inspired and effective action. So number four is pretty much a result of the other three because we can take action all day. We can work 24 hours and not get where we want to want to be right so it's really about okay aligned action inspired action that then becomes effective i've also written about alignment and different ways we can align how we we can align mentally physically energetically and in some other ways too emotionally right but it's in the end it's all connected but we can't focus individually on these types of alignment and also depending on what speaks more to us now, I believe that if you master a self-empowering mindset and heart set, if you learn how to connect with your heart and to its wisdom and to really and take the time to really listen to it, and you will gain a lot from that, right? And uh, then you have you own your unique brilliance, which is a distinctive uniqueness piece. Then you have a body and energy conscious presence, which is a huge piece of business presence, of leadership presence, executive presence. Then yes, your action will be more inspired by the right things and therefore also more effective. And that's why I added this. And also because of course, without action, nothing much happens. But again, it has to be not just any action. Yes, no, I love that. I think everything, so the the PLT, Powerful, Transfer, Powerful Leadership Transformation, those four pillars are so intertwined. And that fourth one is critical because absolutely, if, you know, I always say, be bold, be brave, take action, because you can be bold, you can be brave, but without action, then you may as well not have done anything, right? So right. I love that that fourth pillar is the inspired and effective action, because that's mm-hmm. where everything happens. And I think, I think women know that they need to advocate for themselves. I think they know that they need to speak up for themselves, but they don't go through and look at that self-empowerment. They don't make the connection between, you know, the heart and the mind and the body, and they don't recognize their uniqueness. So, but one, I, I love the way you have that because once you do all those steps, then you have that inspired action that becomes effective and i think that's when things start happening in your career so that is that is a fantastic framework so i love all that there now how do you how do you use that so let's say you know someone in corp in the corporate world comes to you and says okay i need help implementing the plt what what do you do or how do you go about helping them so that they can advance in their careers 
Okay, so all my coaching programs, the one-on-one -on -one programs are all 100% customized. What we do is we start with a starter checklist. Well, first we have a conversation to even figure out that it's a, it's a good fit, sure. right? It's, most people do. Then uh, we start with a starter checklist. It's a clear defining tool, and it also gives me additional information to know how where we where we kick it off. Um, and then, of course, everybody's goals are different or unique, right? But there are some common denominators. Sometimes a lot of my clients want to overcome imposter syndrome or up level their confidence or their presence, and and how they show up in meetings and presentations and all of that. And and a lot of people. And especially women want more visibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the techniques and content that's inherent in my framework then helps them transform in, in a way that they can get seen and heard more easily and also feel better about it. Right. And uh, of course, also, I combine it with the conversational intelligence and other other uh, techniques and modalities and knowledge that I have. And that's in my I call it my treasure chest. Right. Everybody gets the resources they need. And that I can offer, and even sometimes from other people, right? I'm not the only one who who has those resources. What we do is we go quite organically through the process of the coaching program because people transform through it and they evolve through it. They grow, meaning what I thought might have been really great for them two months ago <laughs> might have changed, right? They might need something else now. And uh, I believe that I, I need to adapt uh, organically. This is why I don't always predefine the entire content of a coaching session. I do give my clients coaching preparation forms where they can let me know what they specifically want to focus on in, in a specific session because we want to definitely address their more urgent needs and their situations. But the overall goal is the transformation. Yes. I they that. want to take that with them, right? A lot of my clients want raises and promotions. Through this framework and through just the work we did together, she had the guts to ask for a $50,000 pay increase. And she got it. Wow. And that was one of the highest, admittedly, but others yeah. negotiated twenty or thirty thousand more. It's about building that confidence and adding the necessary skills, negotiation yeah. skills, which, by the way, are specific for salary negotiations. They are a little bit different to other negotiations I have found, and that's why I also created a specific online course for that. But you know, it's all about the transformation. How can I take that with me? for the rest of my life and career. Yeah, um, that, that makes perfect sense. I love that. Um, all right, Regina. Well, I think your your PLT framework is so powerful. So I'm going to say that that's probably a really well laid out uh, roadmap for you to incorporate all the different components and again, come up with that action that you know will be effective so that you can move the, the needle in your career well this has been a, a great conversation regina are there maybe uh and i know we've already you've given a lot of tips already but are there maybe like two actionable tips that you're that the audience can kind of glom on to so they can start working on those right away yeah number one we all must take time to increase our self-awareness you know, at any level, it doesn't matter. And especially if you want to be in a leader role, right? So m maybe start by making a list of all your talents, your skills, your strengths, your relevant stories and background or experiences, your capabilities, personality traits, all this good stuff about you that either you or other people value in you. Right. And all your accomplishments and achievements so far. And really look at your list on a regular basis and take a moment to soak it all in. Mm. Own this amazing value that you have this very unique package that you are. And 
it's, it's, it's a really unique treasure package that you are, but you've got to believe it. And then you can also over time, probably through this exercise, build up your confidence about what else is possible for you. What else is in your potential that you haven't even used yet? Show us that. Yes. yes. This is your first step to know, own and show your value. Got and it. then um and and i call all these these different things that we all have your unique assets okay because they can not only to more lead to more satisfaction in your career but also to more money in your bank account when you make them relevant for where you are right Love it. second uh, a tip is really pay attention to your energy before any meeting or presentation or really any challenging business situation whether it's a job interview or a negotiation whatever it is right check on your energy is it maybe anxious is it fearful nervous if so you know take a moment and focus on your inner power energy hmm. and that inner power energy i have found that you can most easily most people you, you gotta find out for yourself but most people can access it really quickly in the solar plexus area so try this and, and breathe into this area and bring your energy out maybe through the top of your head and surround yourself with that beautiful power energy. But first, take a few moments, breathe into it, focus on it, because as you know, what you focus on expands and allow yourself to feel that effect. It's such a simple exercise, right? And it can do a lot. That's yeah. awesome. All right. Wonderful. Well, Regina, thank you again for taking the time to go through that uh, great framework because, again, those all those components are going to, if you actually implement them, they're going to make a difference in your career. And I think that's the biggest thing. You know, we said, you know, be inspired and take a, a, effective action because mm -hmm. without you being inspired or without you aspiring to do more or to do better and then bringing in your heart in your body you know it it nothing happens if you don't put all of those components together so i love it so just really quick regina what how did you um end up becoming a uh leadership transformation coach well i was in uh, in i was working for the boston consulting group for about 16 years with an interruption they hired me back at some point and i had left and uh, i did this work on several different continents and uh you know i moved to spain when i was 26 with the boston consulting group got the opportunity to move into a leadership position because somebody saw that potential in me which was completely unexpected because i had just learned the language uh, the spanish language and just moved there 10 months earlier right that then led me to have different roles at the Boston Consulting Group over time in different countries. Uh, I helped them open the uh, Portuguese office, learn Portuguese. Then I helped them open the, the Brazilian office, the first one in Sao Paulo. And uh, one thing led to the other. I then decided to leave. I um, Oh, I actually also did some European projects. Um, before I actually left, I decided to leave and work with a BCG alum, actually, who had uh, founded his own company in Argentina, was then hired back when they, when Argentina was doing really badly in 2000, 2001, was hired back by BCG. And I think, and that was in San Francisco. And I think all this multicultural um, experience that I gained at BCG as a leader, as a manager, leading very diverse teams with different, you know, different jobs, different nationalities, and anything you can imagine, gave me a lot of practical knowledge for sure. Later, I studied a lot of holistic stuff just because I really, it really interested me. And um, I had uh, businesses in, I also owned businesses in Argentina and Brazil eventually and then i pulled all this eclectic experience together when i moved to new york about uh, 12 years 13 years ago now and i said okay what am i going to do with all this amazing experience yeah so rich how can it be meaningful for others and how can 
can make an impact with this. And this is how Transform Your Performance, uh, my current business, was born. And over time, you know, it developed into what it is now. And over time, I learned a lot through my clients as well. And I, I put all that I learned with them into this framework as well. I love it. Well, I'm glad that you had all those different experiences. So where are you from originally? I'm originally from a small farm in a small village in Bavaria, Germany. Okay. Well, I moved, yeah, I moved to Munich at the age of 19, first big city, and then the cities were growing bigger over time. <laughs> God. You know, and uh, yeah, I always had this adventurous spirit inside of me. I was extremely shy as a little girl. I was like the shyest kid in the village. I think the the adventurous spirit that was sort of running in the in my dad's lineage, some of those people pushed me out to the world. Good. Well, I'm glad they did because now you're sharing all this amazing, you know, ways that you can transform yourself. And this is wonderful. Any final words, Regina? Well, really, the, the one thing that I want you all to remember is that uh, something that I said earlier already, everything you need is already inside of you. We all have limitless potential. There's so much we can still uncover and discover in it. I really enjoyed talking to Regina about her powerful leadership transformation framework. So those were the four steps that she identified, which were like self-empowering mindset and heart set, you uh, identify your uniqueness, make sure that you connect that body and energy presence, and also have inspired and effective action. So Regina shared two tips with us. And tip number one, she did say, take the time to increase self-awareness. So get to know yourself. What do you like? What don't you like? Take a little bit of time to understand that about yourself. And tip number two, she says, pay attention to your energy. If your energy is really low, try to figure out why it's low. What's going on in your life? Take the time to pause, breathe, and literally just stop and smell the roses. All of Regina's contact information is going to be on the episode website. So go there to connect with her. And one thing that just really, truly resonated with me is for us to know our unique assets, because we are all unique individuals. But in order for you to be able to talk about knowing, owning, and showing your value, you have to take the time to get to know what your unique assets are. So with that, remember to be brave, be bold, and take action. Thank you for listening to this episode. Let these stories of self-encouragement and professional development serve as a guide in navigating through corporate America in the most practical and fulfilling way possible. Do not forget to subscribe to the show at nowomanleftbehind.com for more content like this. Leave a rating and share it with your friends because we want to make sure that no woman is left behind. Until I see you next time, remember to be brave, be bold, and take action.